decided we're gonna do a little bit of practice here and just decided haven't used it in a while but we're gonna bring out the R10 for this one why well haven't used it and uh, you know, obviously I use more of the flight scope stuff. I use, I love my Mevo, Mevo Plus for camps and stuff, all that. But, you know, this is a good device. It just, uh, and they've had some updates, so I, I hadn't done those yet. I was like, all right, well, I wanna try them out and do it. So, that's what we did. All right, so first thing for me is warming up. I'm always doing this so I don't let myself slide on this one. It just works too well. Works too well. Makes me hit it too good. So every day, every day, even in my tournaments, I throw this on for a few swings to get this. Now, one thing I'm going to do actually, because I'm not super good, because I'm not the greatest with uh, posture, stuff like that. What I'm actually going to do is take off this spiky plate just to give myself a little bit flatter pad here to work with. So I'm gonna try that, see how it goes. It was something that was recommended for, for me to try. So we'll do it. Okay, so we've got our red light on our Garmin. Actually, sorry, we got our flashing green light. The one thing that I have always not liked is you can't do a waggle because you just can't. You have to, uh, you, you gotta make sure you keep the, uh, the radar from getting triggered. So that's always interesting. Um, let's check that one. Direction, that was pretty good. 55 in the air, so let's do a couple here. I've got a bucket right out here ahead of me. That is 38. So let's see if we can, so that landed right next to it. So it said 42. 42 on that carry. Another one, pretty good. That landed right next to it as well, so 36. Might have been a touch short, so I'll give that, I'll give that. Pretty good there. Little deep, I would say. A little deep. I uh, didn't get that one. I'm not sure. Maybe I, I might have waggled in there. So that's one of the things that just drives me nuts. I'm just so used to a waggle. Like, I'm not a fan when it makes me do something that's actually detrimental to my game. Like I always tell people, like you should be waggling. So that's a little deep of that. 41 seems about right. Okay, face to path. Same. We had 120. The backspin's been consistently a thousand. Let's try that again. Let's see. So I hit that a little harder. Let's see what we get on that. No read again. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if I had the uh, the light. Try not to waggle. That's a little deeper, straight ahead. 32.18. Could be 55, I, I, that's probably pretty close. Might be falling a little bit. And let's see, club path, 6.2 to the right. Face to path, 4.2 left, but I'm hitting no side spin. So let's see, I mean, that's with a 60 degree. So let's take it up a little bit. I'm trying to remember all of those numbers. Let's 
All right, so that's definitely a draw. It says it went 125. Club path 93 to the right. So let me check. Let's make sure that's another thing that's a little difficult. So I'm gonna get this right at the 125. So it could be, all right, so it's a little difficult to align the unit and then you start getting some weird numbers. Okay, it's a little bit of a push, fell asleep on me there. Hit pretty good, 3.8. That distance 125 again. Hmm. I'm trying to decide. I can't. It's hard to tell. I mean, I don't hit this club 125 normally. So that's hit really good. Club pass. I mean, I don't know about that. Seems a little aggressive. 134. That, that's possible. I think that could be. Let's see about some of these other numbers. So, let's see, attack angle two up. Smash looks all right. Launch 23, not too bad either. As we go, so. And I'm hitting a range ball. There is no adjustment for the range ball. So like when I'm hitting with my Mevo Plus, you know, you can put range ball mode on there and it's going to calculate your range ball difference. So that's nice. So obviously that's not going to happen here. So that one I didn't hit as good. So definitely went shorter. So, you know, if I, I normally hit this club about 150 in the air. So you add about 10% or so, you know, it's getting pretty close. You just got to do the math on your own a little bit there. So that one was hit really good. 135 in the air. It does look like it's flying a little farther than that. So here's what we're going to do. Just, I got to move away from my targets. I just want to have an idea. I've got it set up going straight ahead. I'll keep it there. But what I'm gonna do is, let's just shoot. We've got a 150 sign over there, but that's not measured from here. So that's 125 here. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go over there. I have a little bit of a better look at this one. I can kind of tell. Now that one was high and fanned. I think it got it still. Yeah, it got it, it's at 123. Felt like it landed right on the back side of the hill, so probably carried about 130. So it's, I think it's doing all right. So that one was hit really good. All right, so that went well past it. And it says 132. Feels like it went a lot farther than that based on what I'm seeing. But it's probably not far off. It's probably within a couple yards on those. So that's good. I mean, sides or spin rate 8,000 for a nine iron, that does make sense. And again, it's a range ball. So that does make sense as we go. But, uh, you know, the big thing is I would really just care about the numbers as far as distance, especially on those shorties. But let's try a five iron here. Let's just see what we get. So that's hit very straight right over the top of the 125. It was drawing just a slight bit. So 184, I try to hit this about 200. 
So that was drawing, but it's saying it had a spin axis to the right. Um, and the wind is blowing to the right. So for it to be drawing into a left to right wind, you know, it had to be fairly decent draw, I would think. But we'll try a couple more. Okay, so that's drawing. Now it's holding its line because of the wind. And it's telling me what? Spin rate seems good. Spin axis left. Face goes right. Club path. So how do we get a spin axis left when the face and the path so you have the path is left, the face is right. So that's where this device has tricked me up always. Um, is it's always been, I always think it's been backwards. So I've got it aimed, I keep checking the aim. So what it's telling me is, and that ball is curving left, I can see it, I can see it. So it's saying, you know, we're cutting across it ever so slightly ever so slightly, it's only two degrees. That's, that's, I still would even take that, but I'm cutting across, face is open slightly to that path. I'm hitting it squ square, they feel good. Um, and the spin is good. So like you're getting a spin rate that's, you know, that tells me I'm hitting it good too. The ball wouldn't spin if I wasn't hitting it very good, but we're getting, um, you know, left spin based on those readings, that, that's odd. That's where I kind of always thought about it. Like, I think it's just a glorified a little bit where it's not really doing tracking of the ball or of the club, I should say. It's really only tracking the ball. So is this a great monitor? I think it could be a really good one for yardage gapping. Um, are you gonna learn about your swing and how you're swinging it? Well, if the numbers are backwards, that's gonna tell people to keep swinging out. But then when you're actually looking at the ball flight, it's like, wait, I'm actually drawing it and I'm drawing it into a left to right wind. Like that's a big draw. So like I, if I was to take the numbers of what they were saying, you know, I would say, oh, I'm swinging left. There's no way I'm, it says I'm 0.1 left. There's just no way. There's just no way. Um, you know, that ball, it even started left and it really hooked again into a left to right wind. So that's my big thing with it. So as we're practicing, can I still keep practicing with this? Absolutely, you know, talked about it in the past, what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to get my numbers on my wedges dialed in. And understanding how far I hit it, you know, so there's my 50 degree fluid, probably about 100 and, 105 is what I would have guessed because that target in front of us is 93, 101. So not bad. Again, on the short end, reading ball data, I feel very good about it. But the club data, you know, it's just, it's just never matched up to what you got going on. You know, again, there is a little bit of a, little bit of a draw, six, seven, right? So it, it seems to I put it together on the, those. But, so there's a low little draw. I like that shot right at about 95. So 93 there, it, it landed right about our 94, 95 target. So again, on the short end, from a distance standpoint, I do think this, you know, is can you gap and stuff? Absolutely. Um, you know, are you gonna get, when I go away from hitting outside where I can see the ball, Am I going to get some weird ball flights? Probably, right? Because what it's reading and what the unit is telling us is the input to the simulator software. That's actually not what's happening, right? So that's my one big thing um, as we go through it. But outdoors, love it. And I can keep it going. So we will keep dialing in these wedges. We've got some tournaments coming up. Got to get these yardages trying to learn how far I hit my wedges. That's been a big, uh, big area of concern in 
my game. Ooh, I like that one. Boop. There it is. So if you have any questions about it, Garmin, this is the latest update 4.0. Make sure you check out those updates. Those are very helpful. But uh, if you're seeing different things than me, let me know. If you have questions about it, let me know. But otherwise, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.